Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. I will open tonight's meeting and ask if the board has any public comment this evening. Board first. The, bo the board first. Anybody on the board? Nope. We have a couple of announcements first before I go to the public comment from the public. Uh, first, I've been asked to announce from the Conservation Commission that there is an edible wild plants walk with naturalist John Root, which is on Saturday, May 9th at 4 p.m. at the Parker Farm, 825 Lancaster Avenue in Lunenburg. Learn how to identify and prepare common wild plants for food and drink. Informational pamphlets will be distributed and plants will be offered for sale. It's free admission and all ages are welcome. And it is part of the Mass Cultural Council in part by a grant for, to the Lunenburg Cultural Council. So again, Edible Wild Plants Walk with Naturalist John Root, Saturday, May 9th, 4 p.m. at Parker Farm, 828 Lancaster Avenue in town. Uh, next is... I just wanted to announce two things that happened while uh, we were on our end of the month hiatus. First was there was the topping off ceremony at the middle high school building uh, last Thursday uh, where all the students from the whole school district were in attendance and uh, I want to thank the school department, the superintendent, or everybody, the PTO, everybody who helped at that and all the speakers. They put in the final two steel uh, girders at the elevator shaft at the top, uh, full with the important Christmas tree topping. And it was a very nice ceremony and it was well done. And all, the, all the students who wanted to, anybody who wanted to, not just students, were able to sign the, sign the girders before they went on. So that was a very uh, good milestone again in the Okay, in the production of the, the school, so that continues to go well. Also with the schools, on Sunday, there was the dedication of the buddy bench at the primary school. Again, very well attended by parents and students. They had this, the primary school student council, uh, the superintendent, and many of the school administration were there, school committee members as well. And I want to thank uh, Jim Levesque and his family uh, for donating this buddy bench in, in honor of Bob Meek Levesque, who of course passed away last year. So in his, in his memory, it, it will be well served and it was really beautiful dedication on a beautiful Sunday. So thank you for that. Um, and then lastly, there was town meeting this past Saturday. So we got through the lion's share of the town warrant. Uh, I would love to sit here and say that we got through the entire town warrant, but it got Basically, we had a dissolved town meeting at 3 o'clock. By about 3.20, we actually dissolved it because of lack of a quorum. Uh, I'll take this moment. I, I certainly don't want to get up on a soapbox and everything, but I want to make everybody aware that it is the one time of the year this, this is an open town meeting uh, municipality, which means everybody who's a registered voter can vote how things happen in the town. Without a minimum quorum, we couldn't even finish what the agenda that was there which, in my mind, is certainly disheartening because a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into getting the articles that we felt needed to be passed uh, and certainly were there to help that happen. And the fact that we couldn't even have 50 people till the end, um, I don't know what that speaks to, but it, whatever it speaks to, it doesn't speak well. So I'm hoping we'll be able to try to revamp how, this, how the town meeting gets orchestrated, how the warrant articles get numbered, because we need people there, unless we're willing to change you know, the quorum, which I feel would be not an appropriate thing to do, because 50 people out of 10,000 even deciding things is uh, certainly makes one open one's eyes. Uh, so to pick it lower than that, just so we can get town business done, I don't think that's the answer. I think the answer is getting more participation for the one day a year uh, that we do the town's business. So. 
Now I will ask if anybody from the public has any public comment. Hmm, sure, you can have it. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Board of Selectmen, uh, my name is Donald Gurney. I live at 37 Riley Road in the town of Lunenburg. I'm a friend of Elaine Morose, who is here, uh, who lives at 64 Chestnut Street. Elaine's property is uh, adjacent to an abuts Marshall Park. I'm here to respectfully request the Board of Selectmen to consider assuming responsibility for, or in the alternative, participating in a solution with respect to uh, the off-street parking project at Marshall Park. Here's the status of the project as I understand it. The project was authorized by town meeting in May 2014. The purpose of the project is to alleviate the on-street parking and congestion on Chestnut Street on game days. In July 2014, Elaine returned from a short business trip out of town to, to discover that the town had started the project by cutting down more than 20 mature pine trees on her property and by demolishing a historic and irreplaceable New England stone wall delineate, delineating the eastern boundary of her property. The town had planned to provide access to the project from Chestnut Street. I understand that the town commenced construction without a professional survey, instead relying on measurements made by town employees who are not licensed surveyors. The town now proposes to provide access to the project from Massachusetts Avenue. The currently proposed location of the project is on an elevated knoll adjacent to Chestnut Street, just to the west of the baseball field used by the Lunenburg Phillies and the Babe Ruth Leagues. I attended a meeting of the Parks Commission on last Wednesday, April 29, 2015, at which the project was discussed. I came away from that meeting with the clear impression that the town has not obtained formal confirmation from the Conservation Committee that the project is located at the legally required distance from nearby wetlands and at the legally required distance from the Vernal Pool on the Lane's property. It was also clear to me that the town and the Parks Commission have not taken into account the aesthetics concerns raised by affected residents of Chestnut Street, nor have the town and the Parks Commission taken into account possible alternative locations for the project within Marshall Park. One member of the public present at the meeting suggested investigating the possibility of obtaining permission from St. Boniface to use existing parking on game days, and I think this suggestion is worthy of consideration. Uh, I did learn from the Parks Commission meeting that a licensed surveyor from the town's engineering firm had confirmed the boundary, boundary lines of Elaine's property as consistent with Elaine's understanding of those boundary lines. One question for my own edification is, is the town not subject to the Building Department, Planning Board, and Conservation, Conservation Commission reviews and approvals that would apply to a private individual or private entity as a condition precedent to com commencing a similar parking lot construction project. To date, the town has not agreed to compensate Elaine for the damage to her property. I would ask Elaine to address that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eileen Marrero, 64 Chestnut Street, whose property Donald was just speaking about. I know that you all have received, or I believe you received an email from me that talks about the facts from my point of view about what has happened over the last nine months. And so I won't, I'll be brief. I just want to talk to you a little bit about 
my feelings. Um, I have, I feel that I have sincerely been working with the town over the last nine months to try to get this addressed peacefully. I know that you've all received a previous letter from me as well. And um, <laughs> even though that's what I wanted to happen, I'm starting to feel that that is really futile. I um, have been very discouraged that the thing that I've most consistently asked for, which is an alternative plan be seriously considered, or some alternative seriously considered, that would move the parking away from the current lo the location that the town's been advocating for ever since they, right after they cut down my trees. Um, I was under the impression that type of plan was being reviewed over the winter, and I found out at the pa Parks Commission meeting last week that it has not been. I also found out last week that although I was notified by the town's insurance carrier last October that there was a, a claim pending and that would be investigated, when I hadn't heard anything after that discouraging meeting last week, I called them and they told me that the, the claim had been withdrawn by the town. So I am, I just kind of don't understand why it's been, I've been hard to work with the town um, for something that I think could be mutually advantageous. I'm not asking. I, I'm willing to mitigate what damages I would be asking for if I could get a serious plan understood or um, a serious plan looked at by the town to to move the parking, um, and I just don't feel as though that serious consideration has ever happened. I don't feel that I've been treated well, and I think it's kind of ironic because I was the victim. I didn't go looking for this problem to happen. It sort of happened to me. So. You know, my friends back in July said, oh, Elaine, you need a lawyer, you know, and I said, no, I'm going to, I want to work this out well, but I'm now discussing this incident with lawyers because I just don't feel as though in nine months we've made any progress. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'll just make some brief comments. I, I, it is not my intention to obviously discuss or debate this at, at length, especially in public comment, but I do want to say some comments about it. First of all, I have received, and I know members of the board, I don't know how many you've sent to who, but I certainly have received all your, your correspondences, and I take this matter seriously. Um, I would also say that the Board of Selectmen has limited, uh, a limited authority, if any authority, because the, the Parks Commission is a duly elected commission themselves. Uh, should that not be the case, if they if they do not have uh, a quorum after this next election, that condition may change. But right now, there's uh, we can't impose a decision. We can get involved, but we cannot impose any authoritative decision to them. Uh, two just factual things, and I, I again I don't mean these to be contentious, but they are. Uh, important to note for people who are listening is that the survey that was done by the town's engineer, the property lines were inconclusive. And so he certainly said what he, what the speaker said earlier, but then he corrected himself saying that that is not, was not accurate, that the boundary lines are not clearly discernible even after he did the survey. Not being a server myself, uh, it's, you know, I'll take somebody at their word. I don't know. And as for the claim with the town, I believe it is still an open case. Is that correct? As far as I'm aware, it is an open case. It may be inactive. Um, if it was closed for some reason, it certainly can be reopened. Um, I don't know who would have told the insurance company. We manage insurance out of the selectman's office. So I don't know why it would be reported as being closed because we did not ask it to be closed. I do believe they call for um, periodic updates. We certainly inform them that we're trying to work through this, but I, I don't know why it would be reported as being closed. Okay, so we can re please. I just want to say that I did personally speak with Janet McCool from MIIA, who was the person who sent me the letter notifying me of the claim last October. I did speak with her last Friday. Um, actually, I left her a message early last Friday, and when she called me back, she told me two things. Number one, that the claim had been, that in November, she had been told that this had been settled, or was being settled amicably, and she closed the file based on that instruction. And um, that furthermore, she now felt that the title to the 
well, or there was a property dispute. She found out in the phone call that she made to the DPW, which was actually Friday, not Thursday. Um, and it wasn't a routine phone call. It was initiated because I made the phone call to her. Um, and I just would like to further say that although the town's boundary lines on Marshall Park, as the engineer said, the town's deed does not close, my deed closes. There is no evidence that there is anything at all wrong with my deed, and the fact that now I have a cloud over my deed is making me even more unhappy. So just okay. wanted to clarify well, that. Anyway, we will be working with the Parks Commission and the town and the DPW to try to get some, some movement on this. So. So I will be in touch with the insurance carrier tomorrow to let them know that the claim needs to remain open. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I understand that the Parks Commission is the, is the authority on this subject, but you just mentioned we'd be working with all of them. Would it be appropriate to have a work session? Would it be appropriate to, to reach out to them? I mean, it seems to me I understand the frustration that this has been ongoing, um, and if there's a way that we can facilitate a, a resolution for both parties, obviously that would be the best so sure. if it would be possible to arrange a work session between the parties that are involved and i thought that i heard some concern on both of the speakers parts relative to wetlands in the area and i don't know if conservation has been part of this discussion or if they're aware of it but if not then if they can become aware of it well the plan has to go before the i would like to respond to that so that issue did come up at the meeting. Um, I had a meeting this afternoon with Chief Marino, Jack Rodriquins, and Adam Burney, so we could review that. The plan was originally brought to the Conservation Office, and Jack asked whether or not um, they would need to put that through a review, and he was told that they wouldn't need to. When Adam, and this was months ago, when Adam looked at it today, he said, you need to, to take it back and have them look at it. As far as the planning board review, that is not required for the parking lot on that property. And I asked Adam for a written determination so that we have that for the file. We certainly can provide it to Elaine as well. But conservation, uh, we will be going through. If we move forward with the parking lot in this location, we would need to um, go through the review with the um, Conservation Commission. Okay, so, you know, that's good to know um, because, you know, anything within, a, within a, a boundary of the wetlands needs to go through conservation. And granted, there may be an easier process, but, but we need, just need to make sure we're following those processes. So, you know, if there's a way we can facilitate discussion between all the people involved, and, and I think that would be helpful. Um, certainly our involvement is limited because it is under the jurisdiction of, of the Parks Department, but obviously the, the legal issue um, and the claim from insurance is under our, our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So I think that having everybody get together and talk and try to make a resolution would be very helpful. I agree. So if we could schedule something in the very near future. Any other public comment from the public? Hi, my name is Mary Ellen Ramstag at 44 Cortland Circle. I'm listening to the meeting here tonight about what has happened with the Parks Commission. I went to the Water Commission special meeting last Tuesday and listened to what happened at that meeting. And I, myself, my husband had an issue with uh, the solar issues in town. And I feel that there's a great disconnect in how the town does their business. I don't believe that the citizens realize all the inner workings of the different commissions. And I guess I'm guilty of that. I thought that we bring our problems to you as our board of selectmen and that it is disseminated from to the, the appropriate places but that's not true and what happens is there's so much disconnect you mentioned that only 50 people not even a quorum for the town meeting and unfortunately i could not make it i had surgery the other day and i couldn't make it but we've got 10,000 residents in this town i don't think even in my own community and we have our little I live off of Flat Hill. We call it the village of Flat Hill. 
And in our community, I don't think the 45 houses there realize the inner workings of how the town works. This worked 200 years ago. It worked in 1939 when they set up the Water Commission. But it does not work today. And how can we fix this? When I went to the Water Commission meeting the other day. Just, I'm going to interrupt uh, yeah. you. The Water District meeting. Just, water just to get District the, water meeting. District. Okay. Okay. I asked the attorney, there was an attorney, Mr. I believe his name is Mr. Larkin, was present, and I asked him, I said, is there anything in the charter that prevents the water district from being under the, the umbrella of the Board of Selectmen? And he said no. So I don't understand, and I think this poor woman that just left has that same issue. People in town, especially I've been here 15 years. I've been called, I'm not a newcomer, but I've been called not a resident because I haven't been here 50 years. And I can understand that. I lived in a small town, and I understand that. But what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? And I'm looking to you all for an answer. How can we get this disconnect? And how can we get better people how can we get people involved in coming to these meetings the town meeting people in my neighborhood didn't realize there was going to be a vote they did not know i feed them all this information about what's going on in the town because and it's by facebook because i feel it's important how are we going to get the message to the town that is an issue thank you for listening was mail the warren I, I would I would say to you first and foremost if somebody has an answer to that last question I've been on this board and I've been involved in town for 12 years so and that's my own sole purpose the first thing I did when I got involved with town was what this this meeting was already televised but I worked hard to try to get other meetings televised mm -hmm. I worked hard to get the first non-governmental body televised where we had candidate debates so I've been dedicated to make sure people know in every way we have possible I am to the point where I think that if people don't know it's it's not for lack of effort on the town for getting people to know we have a website we have meetings on cable TV those meetings if you don't have cable are on YouTube we have mailings go out for, as Mrs. Luck said for the town meeting that went to every single household in town, you know, announcing this meeting for town meeting. So we have vacancies that I announce and other boards announce for bodies on this, uh, on the town committees and boards and commissions. Now, if somebody has an answer to how we get people more engaged, I am all ears because I've been trying to find the answer to that myself. Mr. Chairman. I, I just would echo that concern, I think, that, or that statement, that we do everything we can to be as transparent as possible. And you've mentioned several times the water district meeting. Um, and I don't know if you're aware, this board has 19th. also has also expressed frustration with the lack of the knowledge of a vote that was very important right. to the town as a whole. Um, but I want to be very clear, that is a separate and entity than town government. So we have no control over that. But why? I guess that's what I asked the attorney. Mm -hmm. Why, in today's day and age, is this not, it's not, there is no even, and I sent you an email about yes. some of the things that came out of that meeting, possibly maybe having a, a little link so they can get to their right. site. And Fran has been wonderful about putting a Facebook site up. But there is such a disconnect. And how can we, as citizens, I, I mean, three people voted on getting Lancaster water to well, I, I, giving I mean, them water, our water. I agree, water. I agree. And so two things additionally to what I said. First about the volunteers. The second thing is, how do we address each of these issues? How do we address the disconnect? The answer is every single case is individual. There is no, there is no silver bullet for all of them. So the, the water district issue that you're bringing up that we again if people haven't heard we will have the water commissioners meet with us and they, they we will meet with them it's just going to be a joint meeting on uh, may 19th in two weeks from tonight 
So we'll discuss a lot of these things there, but that's a totally separate issue than the Parks Commission issue that was brought up in public comment, which is different than the solar issue, which came up in a much different fashion. They, they were all, you bring up lots of issues where there was contention, you know, and so, and yes, they have to be addressed, but they all have to be addressed in different ways because there are different authorities involved, there are different regulations involved in all of those. So there's not one just giant panacea for all of it. Um, again, it would be nice if there were, but, uh, but every problem has its own has its own boundaries, has its own obstacles, has its own challenges, and therefore its own resolution. So there's no way to do it except as they come up. Thank you. I mean, the one thing that's common in all of them is open transparency and communication. We need to be transparent, and uh, I don't, I, I don't, I just don't take this the wrong way. I don't mean this as a pat on the back of the town government, but I think we've done a lot. All the board boards televise meetings, at least one of their meetings. Uh, some of them, like us, it televise all of them. Um, all of them, the, the, the website has come a long way from five years ago when we didn't even have a professional, professionally done website. Can it be better? Sure, we're always trying to improve it, but we've got the information out. We have YouTube, we have you know, recorded meetings for those that are not televised live. So transparency and communication is, is what we can offer, and I think that's the big factor in every single one of the issues that comes before us. I just, a thought came into my mind, and I'm just going to throw it out, but has anybody ever checked to see other towns, board of selectmen or town functions, to see how things run there? Do they get, is this a global Massachusetts issue, little town issue, or is this something unique to our town? Uh, has anybody ever looked into that? Well, as far as what? To see how we can better get information or better distribute. I mean, yes, you say Facebook. Yes, you say this. Yes. But we've got all these different commissions and, and that act separately. And the water district acts separately. People that, a lot of people came from a mayor situation where it was under the mayor. You brought it to the mayor. This is different. Board of Selectmen is different uh, type of governing. Mm -hmm. And is there any any way? I mean, has anybody looked at what Grattan does, what uh, Dunstable does, to get better participation? Could I respond? You may. I, I think maybe I'm in a unique position. This is my profession. I've worked in it for 25 years. I've worked in three different states. I've worked in maybe seven different communities, different forms of government. In every community I've worked in, this issue comes up. And okay. every, every time it comes up, I, I ask people, well, what can we do? How can we get information to you? How do you receive your information? Because we use, um, now we use the website, we use the newspaper, we use public access, and I'll get, well, I don't read the paper, I don't look at the website, I don't watch the meetings, and so I guess my question is, how, how informed do you want to be if you're not seeking out that information? And I, I'm just posing that as, as a question, but I, I don't think it's something that's unique to Lunenburg because I've seen it for, for 25 years in everywhere that I've worked. I think it's, it's difficult. Um, people are very busy. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's difficult. We what we do is complicated. The structure we have is complicated, um, and and I, I don't know what the answer is either. But I thought I just want people to know it's not it's not unique to Lunenburg. One thing I would pose is you, you mentioned that you've been get, telling people your neighbors about all the stuff that's going on that you've been finding. I've been following the website, the Facebook page that you started and uh, I'm making sure I, I get all that. And of course, you send emails to the board, et cetera. But you've informed a lot of people locally, and yet you're here alone tonight. I know. That frustration that you must have is the same frustration that I know I have, is I, you tell people important things that they need to be involved in, and it's very difficult to get any reaction, any reaction. And it's almost always the same thing. I mean, yes, people are busy. Yes, people have other things in their lives. So does everybody here. So does everybody on every other board. Uh, and the first thing we hear is, well, I didn't know about it. And 
as as the town manager said my one of my responses is well we put it out everywhere unless you want everybody to knock on your door every week because stuff happens every day of the week monday to thursday there are meetings in town of various boards commissions and everything and i understand people shouldn't be at everybody i'm not at all of them either but there have to be some level of engagement that we expect um, from residents at every level, not just the local level, state level, federal level, et cetera. And getting people involved, it's, it's frustration in, in the whole country why we only have 30% of our population that votes and 30% is a good year. Mm -hmm. So I understand, I feel where you're coming oh, from. No, I share your frustration. Maybe we need a, a lesson in civics. I don't know, but it's just. I it's not exciting and it's very dry for people and it runs at a very slow pace that mo so many people cannot weather through. And one thing I say, anytime anything contentious comes up, we talk about the pipeline, we talk about other things, the people who win are the people who just endure. If you stay with it and they'll force you to stay with it, those are the people who eventually win. Thank you. Now, how much did it cost to mail the town warrant to every household? About three k or something. Yeah, I want to say thirty five hundred dollars. So we spent thirty five hundred dollars sending out the notice of the town meeting with everything that was going to be voted on mm -hmm. to every household in the town. So. And we put the banner on town hall. Now, sure, that's not in every district, and not everybody passes town hall, but that's just another area. It was in the papers both. The, the, the Lunenburg paper and the, and the Sentinel, which is the local regional paper, you know, I, I don't know what else we can do. And, I, and, and believe me, I'm not, try, I'm not being rhetorical in my question, my, aunt, my question to you. If somebody has a, a method that they think is appropriate that will get more people involved, I am all for it because I want people involved. I, I love people to be sitting in here involved in the meetings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I would just add, I mean, you, you, you talked about communication and transparency, and I totally agree. But participation is the other thing we've been talking about here. And, you know, if the very, very small percentage of people that, that participate make themselves aware in whatever is their way of communicating, that's fine. But until neighbors talk to neighbors and people talk about issues and people come to meetings and people get angry enough... The participation is the piece that's missing. It's right. not the communication. I agree. And I, I don't want to go without saying, I know you've been at several meetings already, and I appreciate that. I thank you for coming, and I thank you for your persistence. I, didn't, I don't mean to think anything else. I want people to be involved. I'm glad you're involved. I'm glad you sent us information about the things that you do, because they help us in determining decisions that we make. So thank you. Any other public comment from the public? Annual town meeting follow-up. I don't have anything. I just put that on in case anybody had Well, anything. I do have one thing. Just so people, in case people were unaware, uh, we got through including Article 38. So Article th Articles 39 to 47 were not gone over and... Uh, they will be brought over to any special town meeting that we have in the fall. All the other votes up to and including Article 38 were uh, duly voted on and that is officially in, in the books as, as the wording goes. Okay, proclamation for Teacher Appreciation Week. So, Teacher Appreciation Week resolution, whereas teachers mold future citizens through guidance and education, and whereas teachers encounter students of widely differing backgrounds, and whereas our country's future depends upon providing quality education to all students, and whereas teachers spend countless hours preparing lessons, evaluating progress, counseling and coaching students, and performing community service, and whereas our community recognizes and supports its teachers in educating the children of this community, now therefore be it resolved that the Lunenburg Board of Selectmen proclaims May 4th through the 8th, 2015 to be Teacher Appreciation Week 
and be it further resolved that the Lunenburg Board of Selectmen strongly encourages all members of our community to join with them in personally expressing appreciation to our teachers for their dedication and devotion to their work. Adopted this fifth day of May 2015, undersigned Lunenburg Board of Selectmen. We need a vote? We do not. We want to do this one too? Yeah. Okay, another proclamation. And this is for school nurse day resolution. So, school nurse day resolution. Whereas children today face more complex and life threatening health problems requiring care in school, and whereas school nurses support the health and education, educational success of children and youth by providing access to care when children's cognitive development is at its peak, and whereas school nurses are members of school-based mental health teams, and whereas school nurses understand the link between health and learning and are in a position to make a positive difference for children every day, now therefore be it resolved that the Lunenburg Board of Selectmen celebrates and acknowledges the accomplishments of school nurses and their efforts of meeting the needs of today's students by improving the delivery of health care in our schools. The board offers gratitude for the district's school nurses who contribute to our local communities by helping students stay healthy in school and ready to learn. Be it further resolved that the Lunenburg Board of Selectmen proclaims May 6, 2015 to be School Nurse Day and strongly encourages all members of our community to join with them in personally expressing appreciation to our nurses for their dedication and devotion to their work. Adopted this fifth day of May 2015, undersigned the Lunenburg Board of Selectmen. Number three, we're postponing is that correct you want me to just sure so i'm going to propose number three proposal to dedicate planning board meeting room to marion benson and i will defer to the town manager so at town meeting you heard that um, you should expect to receive this request from the current chair of the planning board and the former chair of the planning board um, i did ask that they either come to the meeting or submit something a formal request in writing and I did hear earlier today that uh, this item has been placed on the planning board's agenda for next week so um, I think we'll probably continue this until May 19th or or the first meeting in June pending the outcome of the planning board uh, discussion of the item okay so that will be on a future agenda Minutes. Warrants. Payroll in the amount of $632,888.23. Payroll deduction. Payroll deduction warrant in the amount of three hundred ninety-five thousand seven hundred fifty-five dollars and forty cents. School construction. School construction warrant in the amount of one million eight hundred eighty-five thousand two hundred sixty-five dollars and seventy-six cents. And accounts payable in the amount of. Uh, Committee reports, Board of Health, Bob is not here. Building reuse. Yeah, the building reuse committee met uh, jointly with the uh, sc uh, school board on the 30th of uh, April. Uh, we had a very good meeting. 
we talked about the property lines between the uh, the school property and uh, the, the the Passios and uh, Brooks House. Uh, some of the issues related to parking and and uh, zoning setbacks, etc. We we each shared some proposed drawings, etc. And at the, at, it was it was a, a very good meeting. A lot of, of a lot of sharing going on. And the uh, at the current time, the school building committee uh, has the action item to kind of see uh, what we want to do. Is any changes require kind of a re. Uh, uh, a relook by MS, uh, MSPA. All right. Uh, what, what's the? What? Oh yeah, the MSPA, the school building. Yeah. yeah. For, for and so they classes. and they're fine with that, but they only want to do it once. So they 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 want to be sure exactly what it is that they're proposing. They want to completely rethink. Uh, you know, is in fact the Pascio's, uh property going to be excess is or, or are there other alternatives etc uh, so the next kind of step is for them to come back to to us with with kind of their final assessment we did talk about the fact that that this board and the planning board expressed some interest but felt really good about the fact that uh, we wanted to come with a kind of a unified plan for review by the, the select board and the planning board and uh, the, the ball right now is with the uh, school building committee. So I have a question that was posed sure. to me. Uh, now that the village center district it, uh, was passed and pending, of course, the approval of town meeting votes by the attorney general, the or certification, I should say. Now that it's rezoned and so therefore the district is known, if the school committee comes up with proposed lines without going to the MSBA first, is it possible with that information to get an RFP or or just a request for interest for that property with that with those pieces known? As long as the existing building meets the new zoning mm -hmm. with the modifications, right. the, the questionable line was that one that went through the. The, the 30 parking spaces on sure. the on the sure. right hand side or the eastern side of the patios and that's what we're kind of really talking about now is right. what now there's a there's an other area that uh, we made a we made a potential proposal and they had a, a potential proposal uh, that if they were to put parking there they could in fact draw the line in a certain spot the problem is that that someone has to kind of take a look at at drainage and right. uh, impervious sur surfaces and all that kind of stuff but the answer is once there is a definitive discussion of what kind of piece of property we're talking about yes we could in fact begin to put together an rfp okay because my my question is if if we can do that without having them having to go to the msba since they really only want to go once and do it if we can make proposed lines and say this is what we're talking about and get rfps on that then we have data right to say okay there's people who are interested or there's people who are not interested Yes. Okay. Yes. That, that was that, the only that is question some, I was asking. That is doable. Okay. Good. And do we have any idea of a timeline of when we expect the lot line to be determined? Uh, shortly. I mean, you know, within, I, I would say a, a month or so tops. Okay. Uh, okay. The, the actual village zoning probably doesn't take effect till the end of, uh, the end of the calendar year. We would want to prepare RFPs knowing what it's going to look like. Uh, but the and and then there's the whole issue of the you know the the existing Pasios is the is the HVAC system for the high school so this some of that timing comes into play to make it less critical but we we also want to know what we're dealing with as soon as possible right I mean obviously marketing and determining the interest exactly. is going to be key and that's going exactly. to be a lengthy process so the sooner exactly. we could start it the better yes. yeah capital planning Hiatus. Um, capital planning. No, capital planning met this afternoon. Oh, wow. Everything but hiatus. Uh, <laughs> we are we are recommending that uh, we're going to try to put together a meeting of of all the various uh, department heads and or uh, you know school board etc. to uh, do or to begin to have a workshop and to ask them to spend the summer to put together a ten year plan that is a real ten year plan. That's and that great. take and that takes into consideration all the interdependencies of uh, the new school, 
the new, any uh, building reuse discussions, any uh, existing capital needs, any proposed capital needs, even as far as to say, you know, what is the next step in the evolution of the Turkey Hill Middle School, et cetera. And at the same time, the I know that this board has asked, and and the finance committee has also asked for, a, you know, a, a longer age plan of, of vehicle maintenance and vehicle turnover, et cetera. So, what we're going to ask is that instead of waiting till crunch time for next year's budget to use the summer to sure. put together a ten-year plan that we can actually use to uh, put up. The, especially the large ticket items against each other and to explore the the avenues of financing or or other funding mechanisms to be, so that we can also address things like pavement management during that 10 years etc uh, and and the plan is to have a, a a workshop with all those players uh, you know in the next month or so and then to ask them to spend the summer doing that 10-year plan prior to the budgeting cycle of next year and the uh, the capital planning group has agreed to kind of stay together to to uh, shepherd that process. Good. That's great. You know, I was thinking about how pavement management always ends up being the one that money gets taken from at the last minute, and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. if you know that always happens, you have to plan. What's the all? What do you do instead of that? <laughs> I, I, th I think the caveat is that we'll have a much better plan, and it will take into consideration the interdependencies. What it won't do is create any more money. money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, it's, so it, it may just kind of frustrate us, but at least we'll know 10 years out what the frustration points are going to be. Oh, that's great. Okay. Finance Committee. No report. Library Board of Trustees. Bob's not here. MPO. No report. Meeting next week. Planning Board. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't make the last meeting. No report. Uh, PAC. Now, Bob's out, so I can't report on PAC, but I will announce that the Cable Advisory Committee, which is charged with the renewal of the cable license, uh, had our first meeting tonight. The license expires September of 2017, so it's the beginning of a two-year process, uh, which speaks basically to what I said earlier about how slow things go in the negotiations. So uh, we will be meeting and preparing our strategy in uh, seeing what we would like to request uh, changed in the license within the confines, obviously, of the regulations allowed to us. Um, so we will be meeting on the third Monday of the month, but we'll be posting, of course, as per open meeting law. School committee. Meets tomorrow. School building committee meets Wednesday. We're going to have actually a walkthrough through the building. Uh, in progress, and I did announce, of course, that we had the topping off ceremony, so that's good. Um, sewer Commission, Bob's not here. I did want to report on the MART Advisory Mart. Board sure. meeting. Um, they held their quarterly meeting this morning, and they approved the FY16 budget. Now, they're going to end um, FY15 with like about a $250,000 deficit, but Legally, they can't do that anymore, so Mass DOT is going to advance them whatever they need, however, um, so that they can balance it. But however, they're going to um, take that back in FY16, <laughs> so they have a big hole to fill in FY16. Um, they're fairly confident that they've incorporated some um, budgetary improvements the last in this last half of the year, they're, they've done a hiring freeze, a wage freeze, and have tried to do some other things that they expect are going to bear fruit so that their hope is to end FY16 um, balanced. And they're going to slightly increase fares. I think it's like 25 cents on a, like a dollar and 50 fare the 1st of July, but for seniors, it's they pay half, so it's going to be 10 cents for th that okay. group. So they're hopeful. We'll, we'll meet again the 1st of July, or the beginning of July, to see how it's working so far. And hopefully, I, I know I've asked this before, it'd be nice with the new routes that are now coming to Lunenburg and that, uh, that were announced at town meeting and in the mm -hmm. building and in the warrant, et cetera, to see if we can just get even 
just anecdotally how those routes are going. Yeah, the, the, I, I realize they're not doing actual head counts per ride, but it well, the, be, the driver uh, they are doing it like hash mark counts. Oh, they so are. At the okay, end, so at the end of the month, they're going to let us know good. what's That'd happening so far. Great. Okay, excellent. Town manager reports. So I just have one thing to mention, but it's very, very exciting. So I'm glad you're all sitting down. <laughs> This is the first draft of the codification of our town code. Is right. that exciting? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there are only 65 pages of questions that were returned to us with <laughs> potential legal issues. Um, but this is a very exciting day. We have until, it says October 5th, but the town clerk asked... Um, if we could have it back by September 1st. What I would, I will keep this hard copy in the conference room. If you would like us to make you an electric, electronic copy, we certainly can. It's probably, it's about 600 pages. Um, I don't expect people are going to come in. They didn't provide it to you electronically? They didn't provide an electronic um, I ask, don't, for, ask for them. I'm sure they didn't yeah. print this out in individual pages. Um, <laughs> But this is something, I mean, you certainly don't have to go through it. We as staff members will be going through it to answer the questions, but if you would like to, you certainly can. Um, it's, I mean, this is going to be a tremendous benefit to us and all of the legal questions that have asked. So they have attorneys on staff that go through it and they identify any areas, uh, inconsistencies or potential legal issues. Most of them are fairly simple but there may be some um, changes that need to be presented to town meeting and then once this has been accepted I would assume it goes to town meeting to be accepted in this format but this is one document that has the charter the bylaws the wow. subdivision rules and regulations <laughs> the zoning um, regulations and everything so it um, so the town Bible it is the town Bible. And the lead creative person came up with the title, Codification Portfolio. <laughs> you can play that with words with friends. Well, that's it. That's more, Excellent. more than well, anybody congratulations. can handle in one meeting. Okay. Interviews, appointments, and reappointments, et cetera. So we have a resignation first. And this was, resignation was foretold to us. Uh, from the Conservation Commission Chair a couple of weeks ago. So I, Sheila D. Holt, am resigning my position as Conservation Commissioner as of April 1st, 2015. Due to personal and business commitments, I am unable to be available for meetings, site walks, etc. So that is, that, that creates the second vacancy, correct? There are now officially two vacancies on the- No, that's, that's the just one, one and only. One oh, that's only. just one. Okay, one I'm sorry. I thought there was more. Okay. No. There we go. I apologize. And following on its heels, an appointment. Mr. Carl Luck to Conservation Commission with a term to expire June 30th, 2015. I will recuse myself from this discussion. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, last week... Kind of in advance of this, we heard from the chair of the Conservation Commission. We also have the talent bank form. We have a letter from Mr. Luck. And if he would like to come up and speak to any or all of this. Uh, this is kind of inconvenient. Uh, can you hear, hear me okay? Sorry. We can hear you fine. Let me hold it. Okay, um, thank you. I'm Carl Luck from uh, 50 Sunset Lane in Lunenburg, and um, I, I appreciate being uh, able to come here tonight and, and uh, talk to you about my, my desire, my strong desire to be on the Conservation Commission. Um, uh, this, I've participated in um, and uh, witnessed many Conservation Commission meetings for various reasons <coughs> over the time, and I, and I see how important this uh, commission is, uh, not just to today, but to our future and to our future generations um, and I'm uh, particularly sensitive to to looking after uh, to looking after our, our environment um, 
I've uh, provided, I I'll try not to go through the entire uh, letter that I, that I gave you, but um, you know, for those here and at home, I'd like to just outline some of my um, background that I, th that I think is particularly relevant. Uh, I, I retired a year and a half ago um, from a 40-year career in high-tech industries. Um, I, I, I still have a lot of the energy that it took me to, to be successful in that career, and I, I'd like to give it back to the town. Um, I hold a, uh, a master's of science degree in, in physics, um, which is a great fundamental uh, knowledge base that's served me very well in many different, uh, many different ways. Uh, maybe everything except politics, but everything else in the world is basically physics, so um, it's very useful. Uh, as I said, I worked for 40 years in high tech. Uh, the last six of those years, uh, I was the division manager um, for a, um, a, a company that, a, a part of the company that basically was built from a concept that we had in engineering, um, and then we grew it, and I had the opportunity to lead that group. Uh, and when I left a year and a half ago, they were at $300 million a year and, and still growing, and uh, I think probably by next year it'll be a half a billion dollars a year. Uh, so we were very successful. I managed 300 employees, um, 200 of which were engineers, quite a few PhDs. So I had to deal with lots of uh, different uh, people and different skill sets. Um, before moving to Lunenburg, um, I served for six years on the finance committee in Harvard, um, where I was uh, assigned to the school committee. Um, and um, helping work through that in the town again it, as here was the biggest part of the budget so that was very interesting and um, uh, I learned a lot about that um, uh, I've served as you as you know I've been before you many times probably too many uh, on a sewer commission for nine years um, the last three of which I have uh, served as chairman um, so for a year and a half while I was still employed and doing 60 hours a week um, and um, uh, as chairman and, and managed to do that okay I think I think the team this the uh, sewer commission has done a lot of good work and uh, I'm just one of those members but I'm I was happy to be able to to get as much accomplished as we have um, over 30 years over the over the past 30 years I've had um, many roles and been very focused on the Lake Shirley which is where I live um, I was uh, an active member in the Lake Shirley Improvement Corporation, which is a voluntary, it's, it's not like Hickory Hills, it's strictly voluntary uh, to be a member of that. Um, I initiated and, um, and started, they created a, a water quality um, committee on that team. Um, uh, very uh, interested in lake monitoring and education, established the phosphorus free program over 10 years ago um, uh, because we have very serious nutrient problem and weed problem. Uh, I was involved in many notice of intents before the Conservation Commission, um, some on behalf of the town uh, for the drawdown program, which was uh, very challenging to get through. We had to get through not only the Lunenburg, uh, but also Shirley Conservation Commissions with notice of intents and rather rigorous orders of conditions. I also had to work with the state because such a deep drawdown as uh, eight feet, which we were permitted to, um, is very uh, difficult to get through the state. So worked with people at the state DEP uh, on that and made many, many good connections there. Uh, and we were successful in getting that all in place. Um, every year we had to do uh, take a lot of data um, and provide reports to both conservation commissions. Um, and uh, we were 100% in compliance with the, all the order of condition requirements. Um, um, also um, initiated and, and secured a 319 grant for stormwater management and be, uh, best management practices demonstrations. Uh, an area, uh, and again this was almost 10 years ago that we did that, uh, that the town is now getting very involved in and uh, um, even before this opening became, I was starting to get involved with the Conservation Commission because I'm very interested in stormwater management and, um, you know, had attended some meetings with the Conservation Commission and consultants on that as well. So um, that's pretty exciting that the Conservation Commission is taking such a, a proactive and leadership role in that for the town, and I'd like to be part of that as well. Um, I, I, I just, that's pretty much my background. Um, and why I want to get involved, but there, there, are, there are three things that I'd like to sort of address that may come up in your conversations, um, uh, and rightfully so, uh, that may be concerns of yours, and I'd just like to, to uh, say a few words on them um, in advance of your discussions. Um, first, um, uh, I am on the Sewer Commission, and uh, I'm applying for the Conservation Commission. I checked with the town manager who checked the, um, uh, the um, I don't know what the right word for the, 
charter. Thank you very much. To check the charter, uh, and and that's okay. I can as long as it's only one elected position, which the sewer commission is. Uh, I can I can um, be on the conservation commission. I also checked with the state ethics um, on that issue as well, just to double check, and uh, they saw no issues with that um, uh, at all. And and I'm happy to say that that was a that was an initial question concern of uh, of Richard Birch's, the chairman of the conservation commission, and. Um, um, we had that discussion, and as you know, last week he came and made that recommendation, which was unanimous at the Conservation Commission for me to, to, to be on that uh, commission as well as the Sewer Commission. Um, regarding any potential conflicts between the Sewer and the Conservation Commission, um, we thought we might have had a, a place where our, our two roles intersected with this betterment, uh, the Pratt and Lakeview, uh, particularly Lakeview, which is right along the lake. Um, and um, uh, fortunately, the, the, the laws are such that uh, as long as the work is in the street um, or right of ways, the Conservation Commission has no, has no role. So we, we went through, our engineers went to the Conservation, confirmed that that's true. Um, and uh, since SOAR works very hard at not doing anything that's on private property or outside of the street, I perceive very little chance for that. Um, but if there is, then as any one of you would, uh, you know, would recuse myself um, um, from both, you know, from both uh, positions during that activity. Um, the, uh, and I guess the last thing that I'd, I'd like to um, um, touch on is the, is the time commitment. Um, and I don't have to speak to you about the, the, the amount of energy it takes to, to serve the town. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Toll just sitting here, seeing, hearing all the boards that Mr. Toll is on and doesn't even take the summer off. Um, but um, again, I, I was on the sewer commission. It was very active. Um, we had a lot of work, uh, and I was actually chair while I was holding down a job that I literally was 60 hours a week and, and quite often on travel, but managed through... Um, you know, electronics and telephones and things managed to um, stay intimately involved. Uh, I'm now retired. I, I certainly have the time um, uh, to do this, and I certainly have the passion to do it. Um, the last six weeks, I've been attending every Conservation Commission meeting uh, that they've had. I've been on both site walks, um, trying to get up to speed, and uh, and I'm just so... Uh, you know, so excited about this new um, commission that we have in place and the people and their dedication and, and, and what they want to do. And it's, it's, it's really exciting to, um, uh, to, to have the chance to work with them. Um, I, I, I would say, I, and I hope, I hope you don't, um, I hope this isn't required, but I am so um, uh, interested in becoming a member of the Conservation Commission because I see this as something that I would really like to do long, you know, long term. Um, that if the board saw it as a problem, um, in terms of my time commitments and ability to do participate in both things, I, I would um, step down as chair when um, as someone will be willing to step up and take it uh, of the, of the uh, sewer commission. Um, uh, at a very worst case, and again, I hope it doesn't come to this, but um, if I if I could only hold one position, I would resign the sewer commission. So I would leave I would leave that up to you. But just to show you my. Uh, strong interest and desire being on this commission. Thank you. Thank you. I will open up to the board. Uh, I've had an opportunity to work with Mr. Locke on the um, sewer commission. And, and I've also worked with him on, you know, discussed a lot of things with him relative to stormwater and lake concerns as being involved with the Hickory Hills Lake Corporation and his involvement at the time at the, in the Lake Shirley Improvement Corp. I know of his dedication to this community, um, his knowledge, I think, on all of these issues that face the Conservation Commission would be extremely valuable to the commission. Um, I don't see a problem with his serving on both the Sewer Commission and the, the Conservation Commission, as he stated, in the in unlikely event that there was a conflict, he could recuse himself. Um, and I think that I thank him for coming forward, and I wholeheartedly support his appointment to the Conservation Commission. I, I think the job that Mr. Luck has done on his uh, preparation in terms of uh, you know the resume application, talent bank form, and uh, research around conflict of interest is uh, is ex uh, exceptional, and leaves me with no questions at all. So I I would Thank be in support. So you and I spoke. Yes, we did. And so I will say that. As we have an unwritten policy in town that we don't appoint 
town employees to committees, even if they are residents in town, and we try not to. Um, and even though there's no charter restriction against somebody holding an elected position and a appointed position, uh, I do have a problem with that. And it goes against, it, it basically, two competing things balancing. Obviously, I'm here every week, the, the whole board's here every week asking people to come forward. So here you are, and now I'm faced with the choice of, you know, one, do, do I put somebody in? I don't want to start a precedent where we have a handful of people running, you know, elected positions and appointed positions. I think it puts a lot of authority in, in one person's hands, even if it's not. I, I don't, I'm not worried about the time constraints. I mean, certainly you could manage that. You're retired, you said, so there's, there's certainly adequate amount of time to do it. Um, and I wrestled with this as I thought about it more and more, and, um, and actually it's not going to matter to your appointment anyway, but I, I just, I, I would have to stay with that policy. I, 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 wouldn't want, I wouldn't want you to resign, and I, I want to be very clear that I think you've done an exemplary job as, as a sewer commissioner, and I think you, your resume speaks worlds to fitting this position. I just can't, you know, it's an important position, sewer commission's an important position, and then, you know, it just opens the door for me. And, and I, it may not affect anybody else, and I could be in this, in the distinct minority. But to me, it opens the door to, ha to having a handful of people run a whole bunch of things. And I, I really want the involvement of as many people as we can uh, from all different parts doing singular jobs. So it's nothing against your commitment. I think you've done a fabulous job. Uh, I mean, I, I know you personally, obviously, but I just, because of that, my own personal feeling about that these things should be separated, not just sewer from conservation, but you know, there is a, like for instance, there is one on the finance committee. You can't be on the finance committee and be an elected official. That's the one committee that is restricted by charter. Personally, I think it's a, it's a good exception to have on lots of different things because you never know when something arises uh, and people are making big decisions. So anyway, just that being said, I would make a motion to appoint Carl Lupp to the Conservation Commission. I would second. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I, 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 I guess I, I hear your concern and I share it. But at the same token, I think that uh, in an ideal world, we have more applicants for positions than we do have people. And, and along that, I don't want to take us too far down a tangent, but along that line, I think that it would be, it would be a, a fun problem to have where we had more uh, candidates than, than seats and we would make decisions based on who, who could make the best contribution to town or who could broaden our diversity making those decisions, et cetera. And it shouldn't only be, you know, the only way you get off a committee is, is do a poor job. You know, I think that, that in an ideal world, we have several, several possibilities and we say, gee, you know, let's, let's make this decision based on these criteria for the, for the betterment of the town. In this particular case, I think that because we don't have multiple candidates, because we just did fill multiple seats, um, I would I would be in favor of uh, acknowledging your concern but moving ahead anyway I appreciate that thank you you know I, I am an advocate for filling the the seat with the best candidate available um, and you know as mr. toll stated if we had multiple applicants that's the criteria I would look um, to fill this seat and we have one candidate before us and we are very fortunate that it is such a qualified candidate um, as the chairman stated last week there are quorum issues on the conservation commission and we have someone who is from another area of town than the other individuals on the on the commission currently who has a wealth of knowledge um, and i have no reservations about this appointment okay all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed me I, thank you very much. I Congratulations. appreciate the kind words, and, and, and I respect I respect your position. I was up front with you in the beginning, and yep. it's not no, an easy. And I fully respect that. Yep. Thank you. Okay, that is the end of the agenda. I do have. Oh, for first of all, before we go to public comment, 
I just want to announce, which I should have at the beginning, which is town election is on May 16th, 2015, Saturday, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the T.C. Passios uh, School at the cafeteria. So, any closing? Any closing? Well, I'll let, let Mrs. Comment. Luck come up first. <laughs> <laughs> any closing public comment from the board this evening? Congratulations, Mr. Luck. <laughs> <laughs> None. Any public comment from the public? Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rabbit. You're being deferred to, Mr. Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> to the esteemed colleague with the sling. <laughs> I guess uh, we all grappling with the volunteer piece. And what struck me tonight, and I have seen it, I don't remember it really well, but those plaques behind you, most people gave their lives, you know, in terms of volunteering. And so we could have what we have today. And, you know, it's kind of like, look at this. I know the Wyas, two of them, you know. And you kind of say, how do we get more people involved? How do we get them to understand that there's a heritage we've got to preserve? And uh, maybe, you know, I'm actively now going out and saying to all my friends, can you join? Can you do something? Even if you don't want to be town, go join the Lions and help collect money, you know, for food and things like that. That's how this town does it, and that's what those guys gave their life for. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rogers. And before you begin, was American Pharoah one of your choices? I'm going to tell you it was not. And I've, I've followed the Kentucky Derby since I was 11 years old. Um, that's 60 years, and I have never picked the winner of the Kentucky <laughs> <laughs> never. So. Well, you're consistent. I am consistent. <laughs> I am very consistent. Um, for the record, my name is Dave Rogers. I live at 82 Highland Street, and I'm here uh, to set the record straight so that, that people will understand that, that um, it has never been uh, the intent uh, of the uh, Lunenburg Water District where I'm the chairman, uh, to be under the umbrella of the, the town of Lunenburg. Um, in addition to that, the um, acts of 1939 uh, were promulgated by the state legislature. And, and so, we, so we are under a very separate and distinct set of rules and regulations and, and what have you. It's kind of like saying, well, you know, uh, would like to take over the town of Townsend. You, you, you just can't do it. Uh, reference was made uh, that our attorney had said something different, and I'm here to clarify that. Um, and before I left my house to come here, I called the water superintendent and the clerk treasurer who took uh, notes uh, at this meeting, and, and they agreed with me that that was uh, never uh, the intent uh, of the of the water district and uh, certainly not the intent of, of Mr. Larkin, Richard Larkin, who was our attorney. So we, we do have a, a meeting on the 19th and uh, um, I will uh, instruct our attorney uh, to please be present uh, to ask, uh, to answer any questions uh, from a legal standpoint that might be uh, um, in question and uh, uh, I just I just wanted people here this evening and and out in TV land to, to understand that that we we have been since 1939 and we expect to be uh, forever a separate and distinct autonomous entity uh, that is pleased and happy to to serve the town of Lunenburg as we have for all those years so I thank you for the opportunity to come before you. you I look forward to you uh, to meeting with you, as does the uh, uh, the rest of the board, and I would I would ask uh, that because of the uh, the situation, in terms of the folks that are going to be here, if we could arrange some kind of a seating uh, situation up on the stage, because um, and with microphones, because um, this old guy can't stand for a whole bunch of time, and and that I think would facilitate. I think we this can thing. do that. Good. So that would be great. I, I want to thank you and, and your, the fellow commissioners for uh, accepting our invitation and for, for meeting with us. We look forward to meeting with you on the 19th. Okay. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but you know, for the record, I will, I will say that, uh, that when, when the Water District meets, um, it's, it's a, a, a rotating kind of a thing that uh, the chairman uh, and then the, the 
the second in command of the third, uh, provides uh, all kinds of, of treats, um, uh, ice cream and pizza and that sort of thing. So we'd, we'd expect the same kind of courtesy. Yeah. Of <laughs> I think, I think, I think this will be a National League park. No, <laughs> yeah. no designated yeah. hitter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Any other public comment from the public? I will entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. So I have a second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. We meet next week, May 12th, right here at 7 o'clock. Thank you and good night.